Hi, my name is Hudson Hill. I work at the University of Wyoming as an extension educator. Uh, really happy to be here today, although the video might not be my real strong point. I, I love being in front of people, talking to people in person. But with the current times, really happy to be talking about livestock production for, for some smaller acre people. Um, I've taken on this, uh, this presentation and it's kind of interesting to me. I've worked with some of the uh, largest landowners in the country and uh, you know when you try to try to bring some of that livestock production into into a small acre into your backyard you know the the issues are really the same but but then I start thinking well those issues are really different and I I hope today in these few slides for the next 20 to 30 minutes I can I can visit with you and talk about some of the intricacies and the differences between between what you need to do as a small producer and what you need to do as a as a large producer because they are really the same but then again they're kind of different so we'll get started here and hopefully everything i say will make sense <clears throat> so the first thing i'm going to talk about is why would somebody do this why would uh, people want to do this in their backyard you can buy food at the grocery store and something else I'm guessing the people watching this video can answer that themselves but here's my why this is my daughter she's a lot older now her hair still looks the same she doesn't comb it still but she does wash her face occasionally <laughs> this is my daughter this is uh, one of her first uh, projects in the backyard um, you know, when she was 9 or 10 years old, she can take a chicken and put it in the freezer and it can be used for Sunday dinner at, uh, at our convenience. Um, I've, I've really used the livestock in a, in a smaller acreage setting really to raise kids and really give them the same experience that I had growing up on a, on a much larger uh, property in a, in, a, in a different place. Um, and, and we've loved it. The kids have loved it and, and we've had a really good time. So my next slide, we'll really talk about things that you can think about of reasons why you would want to do this um, on your property in your life. So here's some reasons why people would uh, want to do, uh, why want to have animals around. You know, my first one, I'll, I'd, I'd have some people laugh at me a little bit, but for hobby and companionship. Um, you know, life just sometimes seems better if you've got some animals around, and I'm guessing the people watching kind of agree with that. The second reason is you might have a resource to, to utilize um, at your place that, uh, that you need to take care of. In, in our situation where we live, we have some pasture and we have some grass that, boy, if I didn't have an animal to eat it, I'd have to mow it or have other problems with it. So you might have facilities, you might have fences, you might have barns that, that you want to try to use on your place. The next thing is quality. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, when you, um, when you raise food in your backyard, you, if you do it right, you can get a quality, you can get a taste. Besides the, the you know, sense of ownership and pride that you can get, you can get a quality and a taste uh, that uh, you just can't find all the time other places. The next thing is the source of food. There's lots of people nowadays that want to know where their food's coming from, coming from, how it's being produced, and everything that goes in it. Well, if you're doing it in your backyard, if you're doing it in your place, you'll know that. Um, the next one is uh, kind of an over, <laughs> overreaching reason, but... To be involved is something that sustains life. There are certain personality types and certain people at a certain time of their life that just can gain a lot of happiness from being involved in something that sustains life. Um, raising animals, raising food in your backyard. And the last one is my very personal one. Um, you know, well, there are a lot of different reasons, but for me, life just makes a lot more sense when there's a cow around. We have cows that we feed peanut butter sandwiches to, and they'll let you scratch their ears, and it just, it just seems to make my life better when there's a cow around. So I think as we go here, uh, you know, I'll talk about some, some reasons not to do this, um, but then I'm going to really talk about some steps and some ways to be successful if you're going to think about doing it that we've learned over the years, and I've, I've watched other people learn over the years. So here's some reasons not to. 
Here's some reasons you might not want to do this. There's a lot of time involved. When you have animals, you're basically having some time every day that you have to uh, have to be with them, have to do something for them. Um, you know, taking vacations is a little harder. Uh, going to meetings is a little harder. You know, there's a time in involvement. There's some risk. You know, you're going to have money involved. Animals do die. Um and, and some other things. There is some risk involved, and there and there's the commitment. When you take animals in, they've got to be fed, they've got to be watered, and at the end of the day, if you don't do it right, the product you uh, the product you have isn't any better than you can purchase somewhere. So there might not be any reason to do it. And then money. Um, over the years, I've had a lot of people tell me, "Oh, I'm I'm uh, r you know making my own eggs. I'm doing my own chickens. I'm raising my own beef." You know, I, I have my own sheep, I've raised my own hogs, so I'm saving a lot of money. And uh, over the years, I've looked at the economics of it, and I'm not sure that you can save a whole bunch of money, especially if you count your time um, and the risk that, that's involved um, doing this yourself. And the reason I bring that up is because I don't think that that's the reason to do it. I think the reason to... To, to have these projects is to, to, to create something in your life, you know, create fulfillment, something to enjoy, and have a product that is better. So let's jump right into it here. What are we talking about today? And I want to I wanna say it's everything from bees to buffalo. I'm going to talk about things on a, on a really um, <clears throat> elevated status. You know, we're going to briefly talk about stuff. But it can be applied to pretty much any project that, that we want. If you get a specific tied down and you want to visit about it, get a hold of me. Um, but really, when we start these projects, we're really addressing the same issues, maybe in different ways. So let's really get down to it and talk about what success is. Success with these projects and what it equals. The first thing is the facility. And you know, boy, it's different when we talk about bees. You need a place to put them that they're not going to sting people. Might be a lot different, you know, if, if we have buffalo. The facility for buffalo, you're going to need a fence, right? I think I think the fences for, uh, so for one species that I just can't keep around because uh, I just don't like fencing well enough is goats. I've never owned a goat that we didn't call Houdini, and boy, they just had the ability to get out anywhere they wanted to. So... The first thing is facility. Do you have the ability to take care of these animals, give them shade when they need shade, water when they need water, feed when they need feed, get them out of the wind when they need to be out of the wind, keep them dry or whatever their needs are for the facility. The next thing is nutrition. I cannot stress this enough. I've never been around some kind of livestock project where nutrition just wasn't one of the huge pillars. Um, I, I want to, I want to make sure people understand that, that, uh, nutrition is the way to make a project succeed. <coughs> um, if we're, if we're feeding chickens, if we're feeding beef, we're, we're really looking to try to, to create a certain type of project and you just can't starve success. You can't starve profit into these animals nutrition is really really important and spending the money to do it right and understanding how to do it right is really important which goes to my next bullet point here um you know if you're gonna if you're gonna have an animal you need to be able to do the work you need to have enough skill to know what's going on and you need to have the knowledge so i really encourage people boy don't jump in with a milk cow if you've never been around livestock before Maybe let's start with some chickens or something like that because um, being able to do the work and have the skill and, and understand the knowledge, um, there's a lot of varying degrees within that. So I'm going to talk about uh, bred females several times in this presentation. That's because I really think that that's one of the hardest things to do in many of these projects. If we're going to raise babies, you know, one of the hardest things to do is getting their mom's bred. Um, depending on the species. Um, uh, the next bullet point, one of the things to really plan for is too much product. Uh, you know, I've had lots of people over the years get a milk cow and uh, about 
about 70 days after their uh, the calf is born uh, that <laughs> that uh, the cows making eight nine ten gallons of uh, milk a day and uh, you better have a lot of kids if you're gonna go through that kind of product so um, it's something to really plan for and then for this for this particular presentation success really equals picking the right animal for the right breed over the years I've told producers in lots of different settings if it's not something that you will make you happy if it's not something you enjoy you're not going to be successful at it and uh, even if you can pencil out and, and want to have a product from a certain animal if you don't like that animal if you don't like being around it and you don't want to be up early in the mornings or late at night or whenever you happen to have be be involved with that project well then don't do it because if it isn't something making you happy um, it, you you will not be successful at it so I'm just gonna quickly step through those bullet points the facility is so important um, you know each species needs a certain amount of space um, you know with chickens they need a they need a foot and a half to roost and then some run space with cows you know we might be talking several acres per cow um, with goats you know it'd be a little smaller than that but we we need certain a certain amount of space we need fences and other things to to keep them on our property um, we might need some sheds some buildings some other things we might even need a plan to for that facility to protect them from predators so there's lots of things that go into this facility and don't go get the animals until we have a a well thought out place to bring them home to so I mentioned nutrition uh, in my slide a couple minutes ago and how important it was I've seen a lot of wrecks over the year with people trying to save a little bit of money um, and do some things with nutrition really you've got to plan for your desired outcome and if your desired outcome is a certain type of quality we need to feed accordingly uh, you know moms don't have babies if they don't have the right nutrition we can't put animals in the freezer if they don't have the right nutrition nutrition's really important and there's a lot of help online with extension um, back at some of our universities there's a lot of help that we can get ideas about that we need to be able to look at those animals and make sure they're getting what they need I said this in my earlier slide but everybody has their own skill set um, <clears throat> You know, if you're if you uh, don't like cows, if you're afraid of cows, you probably don't want them around. Uh, if you don't like goats, you don't like chickens, probably don't want them around. Um, if you want to raise chickens for the freezer, but you don't have the ability to uh, have a slaughter day at your place and put them in your freezer, you probably don't want to do that project. Um, it's really important. If you're not enjoying it, it's going to be really hard to be successful. And in, in my opinion, uh, you're going to have a, you won't be successful. Uh, so do the things or start with the things that that you know um, and then if you want to do something else educate yourself uh, get with the neighbor get with some of our extension people around the state and uh, be be really ready to when you jump in to get your feet wet that you've already maybe uh, uh, <clears throat> waited in another another stream somewhere with somebody else to to know what you're really getting into You know, I, I talk about bred females as being a really uh, important step to success. And my best example of this is probably cows. You know, for a person who wants just a cow or two, um, it's, it's pretty hard to uh, make the suggestion that we need to have a bull around. And if we don't have a bull around, we're not going to have bred females. Um, and so really have a plan for how you're going to do this and it really doesn't matter whether it's some sows uh you know a nanny goat a, a ewe um you you need a plan if you if you're wanting to produce babies to then feed and do a project you're going to need to have a plan to get these females bred we keep a couple of cows in our backyard i have one cow that uh, is pregnant with her 10th calf and she has never met a bull in her life uh, give me a call or some of our other extension people they might be able to help you figure out how you could do that on your place um, but but quite often this this is really a, uh, one of the, the hurdles that's really hard for people to get around 
So many people would say too much product. That's a good problem to have. Well, maybe um, if you can if you can deal with it. I've seen a lot of people milk cows and have gallons and gallons and gallons of extra milk. So, boy, you got to start making yogurt or cheese or um, something. You can freeze it, but boy, then you got to have freezer space. Uh, if you're going to slaughter a, a whole cow, uh, we just did four head here a couple of weeks ago, and the the one big steer. He hung up uh, almost 900 pounds, and uh, you uh, start trying to put a 900 900 pound carcass into a freezer, you're going to need a really big freezer, or you probably are going to need two. So um, make sure that uh, that you plan and have a and have a plan to uh, take care of the products that you raise because they're going to be high quality. You're going to have a lot invested in them, and you're going to want them to go to good use. So this, uh, this slide I really see is critical. I've already really talked about picking the right animal, you know, cow, sheep, goat, pig, chicken, milk cow, bees. Really pick the one that'll make you happen. And then within that, really pick the breed that'll work for you. And I, I really think this is a critical decision. When you start talking about chickens, boy, there's lots of different breeds. And those chickens do different things. Cows, the same thing. Sheep, the same thing. Certainly with hogs, really the same thing. So pick the species and pick the breed that'll work for you and, and work for your goals and outcomes. Um, <clears throat> we have a couple of cows in the backyard and uh, we're really trying to create the best steak that's ever been created. And quite often on a Friday night, I think that we've achieved it. <laughs> um, and and so we've worked with certain genetics and uh, in a certain way and 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 we've 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 really created something that you just you just really enjoy it on the plate so um i'm going to encourage you to do this a similar thing and and have a lots of fun doing it and that's where success is found so kind of closing down here but uh I haven't talked a lot of things in specifics because we've really been talking about whatever animal you want to raise. But here's some key areas to focus on. If you're taking notes in this presentation, here's maybe what you should really focus on, taking some notes on uh, these five bullet points and then creating a plan around that for whatever livestock, whatever animal, whatever project you want to do. So here's some key areas to focus on. The first one's the reproduction plan. You know, if, uh, if you want to raise babies, you've got to have uh, pregnant mamas, and that's all there is to it. Have a plan for that. The production profile plan, this really tails into nutrition, but uh, <clears throat> the type of animal and what time of year it is and what you're going to do with it, what time of year you're going to calve in or kid in or, or have lambs, what time of year you're going to order chickens, all of that moves into a production profile plan that, that you should have a good feel for how long it takes. You know, if you're raising meat chickens, you can really get them in the freezer in eight years. If you're going to try to do a beef, it's a little more like, I'm sorry, eight years. If you're going to do meat chickens, you can really get them in the freezer in about eight weeks. Uh, most of the chickens that we're seeing in the grocery store and at our fast food places are, are about a six-week bird. Um, depending on the genetics and then and what chicken you pick. Uh, you want to start having eggs? It takes about 16 weeks for most of our laying hens to start laying. Uh, if you want to create a beef, do a beef, uh, you really need to plan on about two years to have that beef in the freezer. So understand what it takes. It's something that I probably should have said earlier in the 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 presentation is right now um, if you have an animal that you don't want to slaughter yourself which most people don't I don't um, uh, we we raise just a few beef in our backyard and right now the slaughterhouses uh, the processing plants most of them when you ask for a date they are opening the 2022 book and for anybody watching this video it is December 15th 2020 and finding a date next year in 2021 isn't all that easy right now most of the slaughterhouses the good ones that I know are really talking about dates in 2022 now it's really an issue I, I, I think that that issue is going to resolve itself a little bit 
But if we want to do a hog, a lamb, a goat, a, a beef, and, and have somebody else process it, we've really got a plan for that. Um, so the next bullet point, feed, nutrition. I talked about this and how important it is, but uh, where are you going to get enough feed for them? Where are you going to buy feed? I get calls all the time for people trying to buy the right feed for chickens. Wyoming's not the best place for this um because we don't have chickens around so it's 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 hard um but you, if you got a cow project boy it's going to take a lot of hay to get through the win winter in some cases uh just exactly what do we need to do with grass to get them to grow the way we want to that nutrition plan is really important um and then a marketing product plan again if you're going to try to sell some of this how are you going to market it if you're going to put it all into your own freezer how are you going to get it all at once and get it in your freezer? And then really a whole project plan. Think about economics and, and really take into uh, account how this project's going to work with your life. Uh, you know, if, if the project's not going to uh, add value, add enjoyment to your life, maybe rethink it. Because uh, the people that do this and enjoy it, they, they just seem to be happier than other people. Um, the people that don't enjoy it, they just don't do it for very long and they get out of it. So think about it, but, but really plan to en enjoy it. So one more time, my name's Hudson Hill. Here's my contact information. I do pretty well on email as long as you're not uh, asking for an email back the same day or maybe even the same week. But within two weeks, I get back to people. Here's my phone number. Um, love to talk to people about the type of stuff this presentation's about. Uh, have kind of a working knowledge on, on most of the things that we've mentioned today, except maybe bees. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, I really want to wish you good luck. Give us a call anytime and contact any of my uh, colleagues in any of the extension offices around the state. There's really a lot of good people out there. That, uh, that love to talk about this stuff and, and work with people. You uh, have, a, have a wonderful day and a Merry Christmas.